About two years ago, Insta360 released the 1R and with its modular design gave us the ability to switch between a wide angle lens, a 360 degree lens and even a 1 inch censored low light loving Leica lens, all with just one camera. Suddenly, you didn't need to buy a GoPro Hero and a GoPro Max because the Insta360 1R could do it all, and all for around half the price of the other two. With this revelatory new design, Insta360 nipped hard at the heels of the reigning action cam giant and offered a package that for many was too good not to buy, but the 1R did receive criticism. The 4K camera wasn't as good as the Heroes, the footage needed to be processed before it could be posted, the in-camera stabilization was basic, the audio quality was lacking, the case was fiddly, and the Wi-Fi transfers were slow. Now, in typically impressive Insta360 fashion, many of these criticisms were fixed with firmware updates and new accessories. For what was left, they've given us this. The Insta360 ONE RS. Don't be fooled by its familiar appearance, this thing has had lots of changes both external and under the bonnet, because unlike GoPro's style of ditching an old design, and all of those who bought it, purely so they can release something new, it seems like Insta360 have really listened to their customers and given it all the beans to try and perfect the design that they already had. And even better than that, they've sent me one to play with, so let's get stuck in, see how I got on. So what are we looking at? This is the One RS Twin Edition, which will cost you around 500 euros, and in the box you get the new RS Core with an upgraded processor and an extra microphone, the new 48 megapixel 4K boost lens with a larger half inch sensor, the same 360 lens from the One R, a new battery with 21% more capacity, a totally redesigned case with quick release side entry, that should make owners of the one inch lens happy, a lens protector and a few other bits and bobs. You can also get the 4K edition without the 360 lens for around 300 euros or the one inch edition for about the same price as the twin edition. The exact same modular system as the original 1R mean you can switch between the four available lenses and also with the three wide angle lenses you can choose whether you want a front or a rear facing screen. Ideal for checking your duck faces on point and in shot. But that's enough looking at it, let's get on and see if Insta360's upgrades and improvements have made a great camera even greater. With the One RS having the same 360 lens and sensor as the One R, and essentially also the One X2, there are no surprises with the 360 video. You get the same impressive shoot first, point later reframing capabilities, whereby the camera records everything in all directions with the 5.7K sensor, and you choose later where you want the viewer to look. The possibilities with this are only limited by your imagination and you can create some astonishing visual effects. You also get to enjoy the by now well-known disappearing selfie stick trick, allowing you to create impossible looking drone-like shots where the camera appears to hover in the air next to your subject. I make no secret of being a big fan of the things you can do with these cameras. I've been using an Insta360 ONE X2 for over a year now and I love it. So with the ONE RS in 360 mode being essentially the same camera, I know exactly what to expect and I'm always pleased with the results. Just as with the ONE X2, the RAW files from the camera need to be fed through one of the Insta360 apps, either on desktop or mobile, to create a usable video file. Using the apps, you can pretty quickly change the aspect ratio, bosh a few keyframes together, adjust your viewing angles, trim the length of your clip, and export to either MP4 in H.264 or H.265 flavors, or a more professional ProRes format for use in your editor of choice. In the phone app, you have a few more creative options with filters, jump cuts, and the very cool snap wizard with which you can view your video in real time and space and your movements are recorded as keyframes. Literally, point and shoot. Both apps are, on the whole, very intuitive with just a few quirks, but once you get used to using them, you'll be smashing out videos as fast as you can upload them to Instagram. Duck face. And as long as you don't push the footage too hard during the reframing, you can pretty much always get good quality video. There's also a new optical flow stitching option in the desktop app, which seems to do a better job than ever of filling in that strange zone where the front and rear lenses overlap. As you can hear, one thing that the ONE RS has brought to the 360 footage is improved audio. With three microphones versus the ONE R's two mics and an improved audio algorithm leveraging the upgraded processor, the sound is pretty impressive. It's not high fidelity Dolby surround, but considering the camera is hanging in the air in front of an accelerating motorbike and you can still hear the exhaust note and not just wind roar, it's a game changer as far as I'm concerned. Suddenly, I can consider using the ambient audio from my 360 videos in my final edits. Obviously, there are limits, and at about 60 miles per hour, you can start to hear the audio deteriorate, but all in all, impressive work. And of course, there's also slow-mo 
because who doesn't love a bit of slow mo? With the 360 lens taken care of, we can move on to the shiny new 4K Boost lens. The brand new 48 megapixel half inch sensor, together with the upgraded core, improved in camera stabilization, and active HDR make the One RS, on paper at least, into a ruthless GoPro killer. But with video, the proof is always in the pudding, so let's take to the streets and see how the One RS performs taking the place of my trusty Hero 8. So here we are out on the bike with the One RS in the setup, which is going to be providing the most competition for your GoPro heroes being used as a motor vlogging camera. The camera mounted onto the front of my helmet, in this case using the Insta360 temporary helmet mount. I've got the 4K boosted lens attachment fitted, I've got the Insta360 microphone adapter and I've got a microphone inside my helmet. So if one of your uses for this camera was motor vlogging, this is the perfect test to see if you'd be able to do that. I will already state the immensely obvious and say that the mic adapter on this camera is minuscule in comparison to the GoPro mic adapter. Nothing flapping around, just fixed tightly onto the side of the camera there. And also within the settings of the camera, you've actually got volume control, something I missed when I moved over to GoPros, the fact that the volume is set, that's what you get. Whereas in this camera you can set up to 6 dB plus or down to minus 18 dB. So if you have a microphone which is extra sensitive, you can ramp the gain a bit. If you've got a microphone that's really insensitive and keeps making nasty jokes about your mum all the time, then you can ramp the gain up a bit, get a bit more volume out. It can of course bring problems of its own if you forget to change the setting or you accidentally change the setting and then end up with blown out volume or volume that's too quiet. I've had both in the past with cameras that have volume adjustment, but once you find your groove and remember to check it, you're normally all good. And that flexibility for me is a big plus. The camera is set to 4K 16 by nine in the vivid color profile, giving us the most vivid, most saturated, most poppy look straight out of the camera, which I think is the setting, which to be honest, most people are gonna to wanna to use. So obviously other than the test of looking what the quality of the camera looks like with the 4K lens mod on, was the most important part of this test is how the volume of my voice comes across. For those who are interested, I am actually just using an incredibly cheap and nasty microphone, which I robbed off of an age old Oxford intercom kit from I think maybe 10, 15 years ago. So it's nothing special. There's of course a potential worry that there'll be a bit more wind noise than there really ought to be because with this camera mount thingy on the front of the helmet here, it's actually stopping the visor from closing completely shut. So there might be a bit more draft than usual getting in there. Yeah, this is me up at 100 kilometers an hour. It's about 60 miles an hour just talking at a pretty standard normal volume to be honest. I mean if I pick it up a bit just to get over the wind noise because there is a bit of wind and there's a bit more wind than there would normally be because of that cracked visor. It'd be interesting to see what happens when the microphone clips. So if I were to shout at some horrendous happening in front of me, oh my god there's a bear marauding across the field. Also in keeping with video straight out of the camera, I've got the One RS set onto the in-camera flow state stabilization setting, default level of stabilization. So this would be Insta360's direct answer to hyper smooth or rock steady, depending on whether you're looking at GoPro or DJI cameras. This was something they brought into the One R actually a little while ago, which allows you to skip a step where before you had to take the video into your phone or into your computer to do the stabilization, whereas now you get an MP4 video straight out of the camera with the stabilization burned into the video. But if you wanted to, you can still change the setting and stabilize the video afterwards, thereby being able to change the level of stabilization, that kind of stuff. Oh, and I'm also filming in 25 frames a second because that's pretty much what I film in all the time. Does of course limit you in terms of being able to do your slow-mo and that kind of stuff. 
but this camera does have that capability and I'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah, so there you go, there's a little bit of testing out with the external mic in the 4K setting. As always, I'm going to refrain first of all from skidding on the horse crap, uh, but then secondly I'm going to refrain from telling you too much about what I think of the video because the golden rule with video really is if it looks good, it is good. So if you like the way it looks, the camera's good. There's no point me pixel peeping and telling you about chromatic aberrations and the elimination of the purple fringing and post-processing because ultimately if your eyes like the look of it then it's good so make your own mind up about how you feel about the video and speaking of making your mind up the go-to has made its mind up that the battery is now dead so I'm gonna stop change some settings and let's have a little look at the 6k widescreen setting So this is the camera now in the 6K widescreen setting, which, as the name suggests, gives you a 6K widescreen video for that super, super cinematic mega widescreen look. Potentially not the greatest setting for a helmet mounted camera because, I mean, my up and down movement now means if I look down a little bit, you lose all of the skyline. If I look up too much, you lose all of the bike. I do think potentially could be a little bit limited for this kind of a use because in order to create that 6K video in a way that the processor can deal with, it's actually slightly cropped in on the normal 16x9 4K video. But maybe for handheld stuff, snowboard, ski, handlebar mounted, that kind of stuff, this could be a really cool setting to get really cinematic footage out of the camera. Yeah, so with the 6K widescreen out of the way, I think these conditions with the sun getting low in the sky are perfect for testing another feature which is new for the One RS, also leveraging the upgraded processor, and that is the active HDR. So there we are in the active HDR setting. Now in the past, Insta360 have recommended that you don't use the HDR features on their video cameras in high movement, high action scenarios. But thanks to the increased processing power of the new processor in this camera, they've now created this new feature, active HDR, which means you can use HDR in active situations. And hopefully this is doing a splendid job of dealing with the fact that we've got incredibly bright highlights from the sun up there but then a lot of stuff going on in the shadows in the trees in the darker areas and whereas typically HDR video would give you a lot of ghosting and weirdness because what it essentially does is alternate the frames between a low exposure frame a high exposure frame and then blending them together to create this HDR effect but obviously because of that with high movement those two frames are always so different you get a lot of ghosting and weird patterns and jumping of stuff going on particularly in trees. So I, for one, am very excited to see how improved the active HDR is on this camera with its upgraded and more powerful brain over the 1R. I think stuff like that would be the perfect test because the verge was completely in shadow but the sun was bright behind it. So you be the judge, tell me what you think of how that looks, how much of a good job Insta360 have done of enabling an action camera with actual usable HDR video. So yeah, there you go, that's the active HDR setting. I'm going to have a quick cup of tea and I'll see you in a second when this review continues. But obviously helmet mounted footage isn't the be all and end all of motor vlogging. We also need to see how the camera behaves when mounted to the bike. All of these shots were taken using the Insta360 bike mount kit and a Ram tough claw clamped directly to various places on the frame. I'm happy to see that there's very little jello wobble and the stabilization keeps everything looking smooth and natural. And like a good pillion, it even seems to cleverly preempt the odd bend. Well, I couldn't very well compare the One RS to the Hero 8 without coming out for a little bit of a showdown. So here we've got both of the cameras mounted on this crazy contraption, both facing pretty much as exactly in the same direction as I can possibly get them. Both cameras are in 4K mode, 25 frames per second, medium sharpness, and both in the most vivid color profile that the cameras provide. So with the curves waiting ahead of us, let's go and duke it out and see how they stack up.
this time of the day it's going to be very interesting to see how they stack up against each other because there's going to be lots of very quick changing light conditions as we go under the trees. The sun is getting lower by the second because it's now three o'clock of an early March afternoon. We're not yet into the full throes of spring yet so the sun goes down pretty quick. I also forgot to mention, of course, that both of the cameras are being stabilised with the in-camera stabilisation. So for the GoPro, that's the HyperSmooth 2.0, I think, for the Hero 8. And that is on standard mode, and the stabilisation in the One RS is also on default. for this section is coming out of the one rs through a mic adapter on the side there so small in fact you could almost be forgiven for missing it completely on like the huge dongle for the gopro and ordinarily of course in the interest of science and being fair i would give you a sample of what the gopro audio sounds like but my gopro mic adapter stopped working when i was in austria last year and i'm going to be honest i'm still hurting about it 65 euros that thing cost never worked properly, looked ridiculous, was awkward as hell, and now it's bust completely. But because there's no microphone plugged into the GoPro, that means it's a great opportunity to have a listen to the onboard mics, see how the GoPro Hero 8 deals with wind at this speed when it's out in the air on a naked bike. You can compare it against the microphones on the One RS on the front. now that means I've made the turn back for home we're halfway through this little loop so that hopefully means we've got just enough road between here and home to try out some high frame rate action on both of these cameras see how they compare against each other
without even seeing the footage that's a victory for the One RS because the battery in the GoPro Hero 8 has died and the Insta360 is still going strong. So I'm just going to pull over, change the battery in the Hero 8 and then we'll carry on with the final highest stabilisation settings to see how they compare to each other. Another improvement that Insta360 have made to the One RS is with the Wi-Fi connection speed for transferring videos onto your phone once you've finished recording them. And to test that, I've got here the One X2 on the left, the One RS on the right. I'm going to start them both at the same time using the quick capture button. But they're both recording now. I'm going to ride up this twisty bit of road just outside of the wonderfully named G-Nuts. And then we'll test and see how quickly the videos transfer onto my phone once they're finished. There you go, pretty conclusive. The One RS is definitely a lot faster at transferring onto the phone than the old One X2. Now, if you're thinking of getting one of these cameras, you probably want to use it for vlogging, capturing your holiday memories, all that kind of stuff. So it's also probably pretty important to you to know what it sounds like recording handheld audio straight into the camera and this will be a good test to see both how the microphones actually perform and I've now got the front facing microphone facing my face say the word face a few more times Andy and this is still on the wind reduction mode because there is a tiny little bit of a draft in the air but just to give a, an idea as well of how things might differ if I spin the camera around obviously this looks no different to you because of the 360 but now the front facing microphone is actually facing to the front so that's the camera handheld and then just in case you wanted to do something with the camera on this selfie stick fully extended for that increased droney type effect this is the selfie stick extended fully i'm still speaking at a pretty normal level because i don't want to be shouting across this lake like an idiot but that's the selfie stick fully extended with the camera's inbuilt microphones Pretty, isn't it? One thing that's always impressed me about Insta360 is that their accessories make sense and don't cost a fortune. I can think of another camera manufacturer that could learn a thing or two there. Starts with G, ends with Opro. <coughs> 60 pound mic adapter. 
<coughs> excuse me. The first new accessory for the One RS, the Quick Reader, takes the increased Wi-Fi speed and goes a step further. I don't actually have one of these for the One RS, but I have been using the one for the One X2. You can either put the SD card in the reader and record with it connected to the camera, or you can use the camera as normal and then put the SD card into the Quick Reader afterwards. Then, you connect the reader to your phone via the built-in USB-C or Lightning connectors, and the video files are immediately there and ready to edit, all without using the camera's battery or relying on Wi-Fi. The added bonus here being that I was able to take the SD card out of the One RS, put it into the One X2 Quick Reader and edit videos through the app as normal. The mic adapter we've already seen, but here's a gratuitous close-up for good measure. This diminutive doodad allows the connection of a 3.5mm microphone and a USB-C charging cable at the same time. The vlogging need never stop. No floppy dongles in sight, and all for the princely sum of about 20 quid. There's also a new cold shoe adapter which just clips on top and creates a mounting point for a light, a mic, or even an oversized audio recorder. You can also use your old 1R batteries with the RS, although the new one is slightly thicker, you don't get those extra electrons for nothing, so the camera will be loose in the new case. In the other direction, you can also use the new lens and the new battery with your old 1R core, but only in the new case, as the camera will be too tall for the old case. You should also be able to use the other accessories like the boosted battery and the vertical battery with the new One RS core and lenses. Although all of these backwards compatibilities could be dependent on future firmware updates. And of course, all of your One R charging accessories should work fine with the new battery too. So that's pretty much everything covered that I've used so far. I've had the camera for just over a month and I haven't gotten to the other features like loop recording, star lapse, bullet time, still photos, but as time goes on, I'll try and keep you posted. Overall, I've been really impressed with this camera. It's painfully easy to set up, reconfigure and mount, thanks in no small part to that new case which I really like. Being able to slide the camera out sideways is a big deal for me, especially when it's helmet mounted as it means not having to readjust the angle every time I want to change a battery. I also noticed that Insta360 have added a small rubber gasket around the top face of the new battery, possibly to further tighten up the connection between the modules and reduce the chances of any problems through vibrations. Having the ability to choose a front or a rear facing screen has been priceless. When I'm using it as a rear view on the bike, I can check that I'm in shot with the added bonus that the screen's protected from stones and highly motivated insects. I'm amazed I haven't smashed the screen on my Hero 8 yet. The screen is small and sometimes a little fiddly to navigate, especially with cold fingers, but for how I use an action cam, it's plenty good enough. I can quickly frame the shot, and after that, I have the screen set to automatically switch off. I'd choose the flexibility of being able to flip it around over having a massive screen every time. The quick capture feature has been very handy and allowed me to save battery while nothing is happening, and then quickly turn on the camera and immediately start recording. Plus, from what I've seen in old reviews of the One R, they've made startup considerably faster. I think that the upgraded stabilization is great, movements are naturally smooth with a bare minimum of robotic changes in direction, even when helmet mounted, which is no small feat considering my head is on a swivel the whole time I'm riding. I also struggle to find any difference between the in-camera flow state or the post-flow state, to the point where I tended to almost exclusively use the in-camera stabilization and save myself that processing step. The improved audio is, uh, improved? I'm astonished by how much exhaust note can be heard in very windy videos, despite the fact that mine really isn't a very noisy bike. Obviously, there are a few things I didn't like so much. I'm a fan of action cams with changeable lens covers, but unlike the old 4K lens, on this new 4K boost lens, the front glass is fixed. Crack the glass, replace the lens. As a Hero 8 owner, I can see more lens protectors in my future for sure. Sadly, it's also not possible to say that the One RS in action cam mode is a clear slam dunk versus the GoPro. The Hero 8 has a wider field of view and the high frame rate options on the One RS are so aggressively cropped that the video quality suffers as a result. But I do think that the 4K boost lens has more detail in the uncropped 4K video, especially in lower light, and both the view and the colours look more natural on the Insta360. The memory card slot is very deep in the camera and when the case is fitted it's almost impossible to get the SD card out without, for me mostly by accident, removing the hatch completely. Be careful if you're trying to do this over a storm grate or while crossing an Indiana Jones style rope bridge. Or just use the largest SD card you can, I think the One RS supports up to one terabyte, and never face the need to change it again. The final shortfall is more about something that isn't there with this camera. At the time of release, there is no option for H.265 video recording. With H.265 or HEVC video, you get either higher quality for the same file size, or the same quality with a smaller file size. Also, there's currently no option for 50 or 60 frames per second in the post-flow state video mode with the 4K lens, which means that if you want more control over your video in post, 
you're limited to 24, 25 or 30 frames per second. Both of these things would be useful for me and I really hope that Insta360 will make them available with future firmware updates. And that's that. The Insta360 ONE RS has really impressed me, and despite never personally using its predecessor, the ONE R, I can confidently say that it's definitely improved. If you're in the market for a 360 camera and an action camera, but don't want to fork out almost a grand for a GoPro Hero 10 and a Max, then you can't go far wrong with the ONE RS for about half the cost. Alternatively, if you want a modular action cam with the added bonus of future upgradability, then the price of admission is already 50 euros less than the DJI Action 2. And when you add the dual screen option to get that reversible selfie screen, the DJI is almost 150 euros more than the basic ONE RS. Plus, at the time of recording this video, DJI still don't have a 360 lens available for the Action 2. And that's me finally done talking. Hopefully I've given you a good overview of what the Insta360 ONE RS is and what it's capable of, but as always, if you've got any questions that I haven't answered, bung me a comment and I'll do my best to give you a halfway intelligent answer. Huge thanks to Insta360 for giving me the chance to be one of the first to try out this new camera. But as usual, remember that although they provided the gear, the opinions are entirely my own. Links are in the description for you to get hold of all the gear in this video. They are all affiliate links, so if you buy using them, I'll get a small kickback for the channel at no extra cost to you. So thanks very much in advance for the support. Insta360 also often give away free gifts for using these links, so do check them out. Finally, thank you for watching. If this video has helped you, then please give it a like. The algorithm loves a good liking, and maybe share it with anybody else who's shopping for action cams. I've been Andy Man Cam, and I'm going to continue using this camera over on the channel, so watch this space for more. Thank you.